Approximately 800 islands make up the chain known as the Bahamas. Apart from the two islands, there are another 2,400 smaller keys, which are deserted except for birds, turtles, and occasionally iguanas. Only 100 of the two islands are at least minimally inhabited, and only some two dozen of them have vacation facilities. Columbus came ashore on the Bahamian family island of San Salvador in 1492. Wreckers, pirates, rum runners, and modern smugglers have been using these reefs, keys, and coves ever since. Centuries before Columbus crossed the Atlantic, a peaceful people had settled in the Bahamas. Originally from South America, they had slowly island hopped their way through the Caribbean, surviving by cultivating modest crops and from what they caught from the sea. Columbus called them Indians, having mistaken his landing site for the East Indies. Eventually, they became known as Lacayans, which means island people. This series of caves on the western shore of New Providence Island was originally inhabited by the Arawak tribe. Arawak means meal eater, a reference to the consumption of ground up grains. Okay. The Spaniards never bothered to settle the Bahamas. Instead, they looked upon the islands as a source for slaves to work in their gold mines, farms, and pearl fisheries on Haiti, Cuba, and elsewhere in the Caribbean. Within 25 years, the Indians who had inhabited these islands had completely disappeared. More than half of the Bahamas' 210,000 citizens live in and around the city of Nassau on New Providence Island. A white statue of a dashing Christopher Columbus in cape with walking stick commands steep steps up to the pink government house. Residents of governors and governor generals for nearly two centuries, it occupies the top of a slight hill grandly called Mount Fitzwilliam. Every other Saturday morning, there is a changing of the guard ceremony at government house. Tourism is overwhelmingly the nation's biggest business, providing two-thirds of all local jobs. Nassau and its neighboring island, Paradise Island, have been designed for holiday pleasure and are jam-packed much of the time with visitors determinately pursuing it. The nation is now one of the world's leading tax havens, an offshore money center with some 350 licensed financial institutions. There are no income, capital gains, corporation, debt, or inheritance taxes. Bankers aren't the only ones who appreciate the Swiss-style secrecy laws. Tax havening has now become the second largest industry of the Bahamas. Paradise Island Bridge spans a channel between the two islands with one lone hump. Beneath the bridge is Potter's Key, where throughout the day, little fishing boats tie up with conch, turtle, grouper, and snapper, which are bought by local householders and restaurateurs. It is here that a great deal of good-natured bargaining takes place, though a non-Bohemian will have difficulty deciphering the dialect. Conch is an ocean delicacy unlike any other. The lowly conch, a relative of the snail, is caught by divers in sandy or grassy areas surrounding the reefs. Experienced conch fishermen know exactly where to crack the shell so that a thin-bladed knife can be inserted to release the muscle from the shell. The animal can then be easily removed and cleaned. Conch is prepared in a number of different ways but connoisseurs consider raw or lightly marinated in lime juice the choice ways to eat this seafood. Raw or marinated conch has a flavor similar to lobster, but a texture that closely resembles steamed shrimp. If conch is to be cooked, it must be thoroughly tenderized by pounding or it will be too chewy to enjoy. Popular cooked conch dishes are stewed, in which case the taste is similar to beef, or cracked, a batter-fried delicacy in which the seafood has the texture of chicken and it tastes similar to abalone, its Pacific cousin.
much of the concentration of high-powered vacation action in the Bahamas is in New Providence. Not only in Nassau Town, but further along the northern shore of New Providence Island at Cable Beach and across the narrow Nassau Harbor Channel on Paradise Island. Welcome to Paradise. That's what the sign says as you cross the bridge from Nassau to Paradise Island. In this case, you have to pay a toll to get to Paradise. But each day, hundreds of visitors do just that to get to this once barren, deserted, and uninhabited island. The island was known as Hog Island before American millionaire Huntington Hartford bought it and decided that Paradise was a more likely name to attract visitors to this new seaside hotel. In more recent years, the island has been developed by United States gambling hotel organizations into a complete destination within a destination. The Sheridan Grand Hotel and Towers on Paradise Island features three different restaurants and an exquisitely appointed casino. Beach ambling or casino gambling are just part of the activities tourists pursue in these island resorts. The recreation desk can book your reservation for an array of other activities, ranging from snorkeling, golfing, sailing, tennis, scuba diving, bird watching, fishing, windsurfing, horseback riding, water skiing, parasailing, squash, or butterfly hunting. Hotel guests can also lounge around the pool or enjoy a beautiful stretch of white sand beach, complete with a variety of water sports offerings. Toward the eastern end of Paradise Island are the unexpected Versailles Gardens. This French cloister was built in Monterey near Lourdes, France by Augustinian monks in the 14th century and shipped here in pieces for reconstruction 600 years later. Local residents seem somewhat uncertain as to the exact reason why somebody seemed moved to go to the trouble of this reconstruction. A plaque affixed to the site doesn't provide much more information except to state the year in which the reconstruction took place. The cloister is at the top of a hill overlooking a long row of manicured terraces that descend to Nassau Harbor and a lovely view of downtown Nassau. modeled Nassau's governmental complex after New Bern, capital of the North Carolina colony of two centuries ago. The present-day House of Assembly, parliamentary heart of the Bahamas, occupies the so-called Western Building. Nearby, you see the Senate, where Queen Elizabeth II made Bahamian history in 1977 by delivering her Silver Jubilee throne speech. The oldest and most interesting building in this area is the public library between Shirley Street and the courthouse. Built of stone in 1797, this octagonal edifice was a jail until 1873 when books replaced prisoners in the cells. Rawson Square, gateway to the city of Nassau, contains a bust of Sir Milo B. Butler, first governor general of the Bahamas. Street is the commercial center of the capital. It is crammed with shops and offices. The, the national government and a sizable slice of the international financial pie are here too. With its hotel glitter and restaurant sophistication, its daytime traffic jams and nighttime naughtiness, Nassau is certainly not typical of the Bahamas, but it is a magnet. The traditional downtown tourist hub is the straw market on Market Plaza at the corner of Friedrich Street. There are massive displays of straw items, jewelry, and t-shirts. 
the type of inexpensive souvenir that few visitors resist. These shrewd sales ladies are not bashful about hawking their wares. There is no subtlety here. What can I sell you, lady, or what do you want to buy, are the typical greetings we are approached with as we walk through the market. The straw market is also a major outlet for the wares of some 200 very fine wood carvers. We were impressed by the variety of carvings and the fact that the artists were actually engaged in their craft at their stalls. Carvings are made from local woods and have unusual natural colors. Coral World at the Silver Key Marine Park contains an underwater observatory, a 100-foot sky tower, aquariums, pools and ponds, a variety of colorful marine life, and a simulated C4 walk. Billed as Nassau's most sensational attraction, the park includes a unique hotel complex that features 22 private suites, each with its own ocean view and individual swimming pool. into the interior of the reef tank, an open system circular aquarium that boasts real living corals arranged in the same formations as they would be found in the open ocean. Indeed, the variety of marine life and living corals is impressive. The stingray pool outside the reef tank contains a number of specimens of these graceful marine creatures. The emphasis at Coral World is on natural settings. The fish here are so content that they appear to spend much of their time watching visitors. In the center of the stingray pool is a tropical island that plays host to brilliantly colored parrots. The grounds are laid out so that visitors can follow paths between the various exhibits. However, the focal point of all the paths is the center gift and shell shop. A short footbridge takes visitors to the underwater observatory and observation tower, which affords a magnificent view of NASA and Prince George's Wharf. Prince George's Wharf is the busiest cruise ship harbor in the Bahamas. On most days, as many as six cruise ships may be tied up here. For some reason, we picked a day when there were none. West of Nassau are the gray stone ramparts of Fort Charlotte, where generations of Nassau residents have sought shelter during hurricanes. Fort Charlotte offers a commanding view of Nassau Harbor. This is the largest fort in the Bahamas. Four cannons are focused on the harbor inlet, However, the only shots ever fired from them were in 1976 to return a U.S. bicentennial salute. The fort was built by Lord Dunmore between 1787 and 1789 and named after the consort of George III. When the American Revolution began, many British loyalists immigrated to the Bahamas. Being cotton farmers, they attempted to establish plantations in locations such as this one on the south beach of New Providence. By 1780, well over 100 cotton plantations had been founded around the Bahamas. However, the Bahamian soil was not suited to this type of farming, 
and by the end of the century, cotton had fallen victim to a devastating plague of chenille bugs and exhaustion of the weak soil. Many wealthy plantation owners went broke trying to earn a living from this land. Others discovered that they could eke out meager existences from sponge farming. Wrecking the habitual freelance business of salvaging cargo from the ships that were forever running aground in the dangerous Bahamian waters was a popular occupation for the next hundred years or so. Rum production is one of the industries that have flourished in the Bahamas. The most famous brand, Bacardi Rum, is known the world over. Few people, however, connect Bacardi Rum and these innocent-looking storage tanks on the south side of the island. Pure Bacardi Rum, which is distilled on the island, is pumped from these tanks via an underground and underwater pipeline to waiting tankers for transportation to the United Kingdom and Germany, where it will be bottled. This one tanker carries 400,000 gallons of rum in stainless steel holding tanks. Twice a day, every day, vans from the Coral Harbor Resort of Dive 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 Limited pick up divers at hotels in Nassau for a visit to the incredible underwater world. Divers and snorkelers are given a briefing by hosts, Lynn and Ray, and then are ushered aboard one of Dive, Dive, Dive's spacious boats for the short ride to sites such as Angel Canyon. Guide instructor Lindsay is experienced at finding just the right place to drop anchor, and soon divers are cruising above the wall on the famous tongue of the ocean. The water here is so clear you hardly need a mask to enjoy the astonishing array of marine life at the countless coral reefs. Divers can explore fish filled blue holes and seek the wrecks of the many treasure ships which met their demise over centuries in the treacherous shoals of this shallow sea. some astonishing examples of the famous Nassau grouper, as well as ever-present yellowtail snappers. feeding fish in this area for several years now in an attempt to make them more friendly to divers. The plan has been somewhat successful. However, fish feeding has one major drawback. It makes the fish easier to catch and easier to spear. The Hamian law prohibits fishing of any type within one mile from shore, but this has not prevented some people from taking some of the fish that divers have befriended.
find anywhere is the orange filefish, and to find two together is truly unique. The larger fish in the background are scrawled filefish, and they can get to be pretty good sized. Providence Island has been one of the filming sites for several James Bond movies. The remains of an airplane put down for Thunderball are here, as well as this wreck that was sunk on purpose for the movie, Never Say Never Again. We were fascinated with the clarity of the water and the condition of the wreck. It was almost as if it had just sunk, and even though it is one of the most popular dive sites in the Bahamas, we still felt like we were on a 007 adventure. My dive buddy Tom and I explored the inside of the wreck and then swam through the front cabin window to see this view of the bow. It was a memorable dive that highlighted a delightful Nassau vacation.